Hey guys, welcome to the video series of data engineering on Microsoft TP203. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In today's video, we will look into the Azure SQL service. Okay, so Azure SQL is a unified SQL service built on top of industry leading SQL Server engine. That's also known as Microsoft SQL Server, which you guys might have used in your day to day job. So Azure SQL have three deployment models, uh, which we will see in the demo too. The, but the, uh, here you can see that like the first one is the SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machine. Basically, it is an infrastructure as a service uh, model, which is um, which is basically SQL Server running on Azure Virtual Machine, and in this case, Microsoft going to manage the host and the infrastructure while we as a user will manage the operating system and the SQL Server application. It's best for the migration of those uh, SQL Server applications which require OS level access. Uh, so it's like a one, it's one of the best option for lift and shift scenarios where we have to migrate a SQL Server application which requires OS level access. Uh, there are Microsoft. They, they, yeah, Microsoft have uh, uh, two other services which they are served as platform as a service. One is Microsoft SQL uh, Managed Instant. The other one is the Azure SQL Database. So Azure SQL Managed uh, uh, is uh, is basically where like Microsoft is managing the infrastructure and OS. We are managing the server and uh, and the application it is also best fit for those uh, left and shift scenarios where uh, where we don't have to we don't need the os level access and uh, it 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 is a good service which do the left and shift with minimal to no database change uh, it's pretty much same as a, like a on prem sql microsoft sql server and the last one which we uh, is uh, Azure SQL database. So it's a, it's also another uh, pass or you can say platform as a service. It add one more layer uh, to Microsoft management that is the uh, server. So Microsoft will be managing the infrastructure OS and servers in this case. And this is like bad suited for any application which is like built on uh, cloud or any new uh, SQL Server you want to establish, like use Azure SQL Database. Uh, next thing we want to look into the Azure SQL purchasing models. So basically there are like two models. Uh, one is DTU and the second one is the vCore. And DTU is only available on Azure SQL Database while vCore is available on SQL Database and the managed instance. And DTU have, um, we're going to see in the demo too, like what's a major difference but basically you can see from the like names like it's like basic standard and premium so basic is like basically uh for like small jobs or like like for example this demo they are like basic will work standard is more like a general purpose kind of thing and premium is like a, for any applications which need more uh, uh more horsepower to run basically and you will be wondering what is DTU? DTU is like a predefined unit of uh, Microsoft Azure where uh, like it's a it's a it's a combination of input output mem plus memory plus CPU so here the with DTU is like it's it's predefined for you you can't change it either you can pick basic standard or premium like you will see the difference there but you don't have a choice to uh, like a change in like let's say you want to change memory in standard you can't do that so to overcome this problem like uh, they have another pr purchasing prop model which is v core and v core is uh, it's 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 of three type general purpose business critical and hyperscale and uh, uh, as the name says business purpose is more mainly for uh, general workloads and queries and it most of the cases like it serve the purpose for all the clients but if still they have some business critical applications then they should use the business critical purchasing model and the last one is the hyperscale is that's for 
um, I'll say like another level of applications where you can't be down for uh, or you need this um, or like a more horsepower to run your queries or to uh, pull data and all those kind of things. And as I mentioned, it's available in both Azure SQL database and SQL manage instance. Uh, the one good advantage where like vCore uh, comes into the picture, like it's with those clients which want flexibility in in like picking up uh, uh, their resources for Azure SQL. So this give you, like we'll see, uh, like how you can pick different number of cores and different kind of options with vCore, but with DTU, it's not the case. So, so let's do the quick demo. Okay, where's the Microsoft? Is it? So I've already created um, like a wondrous, so uh, like I'll say uh, a SQL, uh, as a SQL server and a database, but I'll start from here. Like uh, if you click on, if press on create in Azure SQL service, you will see these three options, which we talked about, like SQL database, SQL managed instance, and SQL virtual machine. And as we mentioned, like SQL database is uh, mainly for cloud application, hyperscale, or serverless options. So basically, there are like three types of resource types you can get in there. The first one is the single database, elastic pool, and database server. So single database is like when you are managing a single data set or uh, everything, uh, sorry, the single databases, like when all the resources are dedicated, you're not sharing anything. But with the elastic pool, like you're sharing your uh, data sets with the, it's, it's a pool where like all SQL instance share things. And the last one is the database server, which is basically you need whenever you want to create a SQL database, like you need a database server and which is, uh, it's just a logical grouping here. Like we, it's not a physical server for us. So you can look at this like single database, as we mentioned, like it's, uh, uh, it's for like a fully managed database service. It's not sharing anything. Elastic pool is like where multiple databases are sharing the resources and this is basically you need a database server that's a logical grouping of all the databases it's pretty much like a, the v we have on on-prem but like it's here it's managed by uh, azure and managed instance have only one way of resource type which is single instance and uh, the last one is the virtual machine like it gives you multiple options where you can pick up the image you want and uh, whatever server and whatever uh, OS you want, you can pick it up. Only infrastructure is maintained by Microsoft. Okay. Uh, if let's go to, yeah, first I'm not going to create it, but I will show you what actually comes in this SQL manage instance. So if you click on create, so here comes regular stuff like subscriptions, pick a resource group, and this is the thing I was talking about, the compute and uh, storage. So you can go and click here. And here you can see they have general purpose, business critical. I know like a, a hyperscale is not visible here, but hyperscale is available in the SQL uh, database. So this will give you like how many V cores you want and what's the storage you want. So it gives you the flexibility to pick it whatever you want. And you can see the based on your v cores or the storage your price per uh the, your price change so if you want like let's say 64 bits it will be like fifteen thousand, and uh, that's why like if you want to uh, practice or something don't uh, create a managed instance because it's it might cost you a bit higher so go for the basic in sql database as well sql database not this one so even the lowest is like $960 per month. Uh, so that's why I wanted to, and they have the redundancy, which is like a geo join and local. That's uh, to give you availability and the disaster recovery options. This is the main thing I want to show you. Rest of stuffs are pretty uh, straightforward. If I go back. Okay. Uh, again. This is the SQL instance and here like a, uh, you can pick an image and it will be straightforward too. Let me pick, there was like one free SQL, yeah. So you click on create. 
and then you give the like same thing subscription resource graph you can pick and then you give the machine name uh, reason availability like availability options which one you want and some other kind of things like not very complex but like very intuitive this is not very complex very intuitive uh, and here also like if you this is also like a bit costly so choose accordingly when I say costly like as a if you this like because uh, you if you're doing this for learning so be cautious like uh, how much you want to pay let's uh, I'll show you this one the single database so if you click on create so same thing database I already have one database but I'll create another database data tech DB2 and server like if you don't have a server you have to create a server but uh, it's just logical like it does not charge you so don't worry about it so you create the server and this is the elastic pool so you uh, this options uh, is basically whether you want to share your resources with or not so you can switch it to yes if you want otherwise no and configuration database if you go here so here you will see all these general purpose hyperscale and business critical the other difference which I wanna which I didn't mention but it is like your so when I say difference so if you look at the Azure SQL database or Azure managed uh, database what's the difference so the first difference is like uh, the uh, purchasing uh, model like if we go back here and look at this sorry so you look at this so is your uh, SQL database have one more like DTU purchasing model but uh, um, as our managed don't have it only have V core and even in V core like it doesn't have hyperscale the other difference is like uh, it, like a Azure SQL database have serverless option which is like basically for those jobs where you don't know how much resources you're going to consume so uh, it's 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 have two compute tiers one is the provision other is the serverless so you can go for serverless so this is the these are two main difference like the purchasing model and you can have a serverless option in Azure SQL database and these are general purpose hyperspace and business critical which we talked about like depending on like uh, what kind of uh, job you have or depending on your requirement you can pick accordingly and these are the other three like basic standard premium and if you want to experiment with it just take basic because it's cheap like six or seven dollars per month and you can click on apply or uh, you can you can pick others too like if you want to spend money or like a, if you're not learning or you're doing it for your organization okay i'm not going to create it because i already created so i'll go back here this is my so this is my server and this is my database so in this database i'm using the same basic 5 dtus so if you go here so to access this database there are like two ways to do it one is through query editor which is in the preview like if you want to do through the uh, GUI or uh, from the portal you can go from here like for example uh, this is my login and uh, I can log in okay and you will see like it's uh, it's pretty much like i don't have any tables or anything like this is not uh, we're not going to do it we're not going to create any table or something like that because that's we all know like we all uh understand sql and all those this is more about like what is the services and same thing you can access through uh sql management studio for so for that what you need you basically go here copy your uh, click on this like copy your server name and go to sequels I already connected but like we can show you so this is the same 
authentication you have to take sql server authentication not the windows authentication then your admin and your password so we are connected here this is our database name and this is like literally like a um microsoft sql server but it's on running on azure so one this this pretty much but i want to mention one more thing here like which you need to keep in your mind when we create the azure database for first time it have firewalls so you need to set the server firewalls for it so what would that mean like for example if you uh, like you created your server database and then you want to log in into it if you even with the like it will throw you an error that uh, uh, this id is not allowed like ip address sorry not id this ip address is not allowed so by default no ip address is allowed so to add the ip address of your system like whatever like let's say you try to log in and it will give you an ip address so copy that ip address go to overview and set firewall and then here like you can see like you can make rule start ip and ip and you can add it and here you can see this this is my ip address which i added okay so that's uh, that's pretty much for azure sql um, uh, thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the other parts of this video series goodbye take care